No shame. No shame, but... A lot of support. Lot of support. Mark and Lee, what were they thinking? They gave me a topic that started with art. Kiwis are born running into things, and then we're taught how to run into things, and then we start falling into things as we get older. But I did a bit of research. Now, oh, that's me after the beard came off. <laughs> I went, uh, I went all the way to a, a city called Paris where they are into art, and I went to this place, and I had a look around, and there was a lot of, a lot of this sort of stuff going on. Beautiful colours. It was very romantic. There was just me, my wife. It was 39 degrees, and there was about 30,000 other people. But this photograph actually explains everything there is to know about science and art and technology altogether. The bloke that actually painted this might have been one of the last people that knew all about science and art altogether. But if you notice, there's about 200 people standing in front of this one. Only about three of them are actually looking at the painting. The rest of them are looking at the iPhone. And they're uploading it to their blog on Facebook. So the minor Lisa now sits on Bill's blog, or his Facebook page, next to the picture of his bum crack that he did at the office Christmas party. It's not a very edifying end for the Mona Lisa, but it's the it is. It doesn't exist unless it's on your iPhone. And we're going to get to that. The other part of it, science, is a, is a flawed, flawed process. See, technology for me, I'm a little bit like Joe. I had a HQ Holden when I was in New Zealand with a diesel engine in it, and I could strip that engine, and that was a point of great pride for me. This is science. This is all you need. This, it works fantastic. It's, it's very useful here too. <laughs> if I've got this in a paper clip, I can do most things. My dad was a roadside mechanic and he always said if you can't fix it with a big screwdriver and a shifting crescent, it's not going to be fixed. So I think we've got to be very, very simple when we're doing anything to do with e-learning or online learning or resources. And basically what I could, I could have stood up here is just said what Joe said and then just sat down there. Because you've covered most of the Joe things. <coughs> but I'll, I'll fill in a few gaps if, I, if, I, if there are any. So science, science is pretty much broken. And when I was trolling through trying to look for scientific things, because it was a very, uh, very difficult uh, uh, topic, uh, title to go at, I saw this marvellous presentation which described to me that science is basically gone. And it was done, it was done when I saw this uh, talk here, which is actually written by a wonderfully smart, one of the St. England's guys, I think, uh, Dr. G.D.H. Gareth from, from Manchester or Birchester. And it's a fantastic thing, but it's, it's, it's crazy. Now, I'm actually, this is real life research now. I'm looking at you and seeing who's feeling sick in the room. I know everybody that's over the age of 35, I'm just behind me, I'm feeling really, really unwell. I paid 120 bucks to get Prezi because I thought this is going to be snazzy, it's going to make me sexy, young people are going to like me when I do presentations. But after trying to do one presentation, I was like this, my eyes were jolting, I was vomiting into a bucket. It was a horrible thing. So science is broken. But the, the topic, I agree wholeheartedly. You know, it's open season on granny, hands off granny with the thrombolysis for Christ's sake. There's no evidence. Wonderful, wonderful uh, topic material, but Unfortunately, it's presented in this way. So we can do weird things with technology that goes back. Sorry, Mr. Prezi, but it's failed. Throw it out. Put it in the bu bundle of Vista. Now, oh, sorry, this is what happened with the uh, neurologist when they discovered TPA. Open season on greening. Now, my disclosures are is that um, uh, a long time ago, when a lot of this e-stuff was started, I started up a, uh, a company, Australian Institute of Clinical Education. Um, which led me to actually having to get a couple of other jobs to pay for it. But uh, we produced a lot of uh, online education and people do pay me occasionally, so that's a disclosure. The Emergency Care Institute, which is a, uh, I think of myself as a mole within the government. We have a government uh, funded site where we are trying to sort of develop a, a New South Wales um, emergency college community. So we uh, getting guidelines and various resources, we link to a lot of it free online access stuff, we provide a lot of stuff which is readily available. Um, we've been a little bit head down, bum up, so we haven't actually uh, delved into the online access community such, but we will be heading there. Uh, and also I'm an ED physician at Prince of Wales Hospital. But most of the time, in my free time, I spend here alienated from my family in front of my computers at home doing stuff. Now, it's interesting when you work for colleges, 
Um, we have a wonderful college, I'm sure, I don't know much about the American one, our college is relatively young, but everything's driven by communities, uh, committees, sorry, not communities, committees, same thing, there's lots of people trying to make a decision and they can't come to one, and they hold positions on things. So when you go to one of the committee meetings, it's all like this. Like, I know that it's no good, but we're going to do it anyway. So you've got to be very careful when we're trying to somehow synchronise and fit e-learning and all the asynchronous material into a college environment, because that's the synchronised part of it. And I think there, are, there is a middle pathway, and I think that possibly what Joe's uh, looking at in terms of structuring what we have, cataloguing what we have, and somehow using it in a, in a useful manner. A little bit of that is what we're trying to do at the ECI, is to take a lot of stuff, we've got no problem with linking out, but somehow pull it in and direct it to that group of people somewhere between medical students who shouldn't be anywhere doing anything by themselves, to the doctors who we want to get out there working with patients, um, but they can start pulling in stuff, but we want to watch what they're, what they're actually doing, uh, to the doctors who are up there, the consultants, what you guys will be doing, just pulling stuff out and having a look at it and enjoying it. Now, it's tempting just to go straight to the summary and walk off because Joe's covered most of it, but I'll just, uh, uh, I went to a very good talk and, and get to the end to start with. Art, there's nothing to do with art and emergency medicine, I don't think. Science, we already know that it's completely flawed, except for a, a headlamp, which is very useful. History, we'll talk a little bit about. Brief is beautiful, short is beautiful, and that's not just presenters. When you're doing e-learning, it's got to be very, very, very brief. And the history of brief talks is interesting in itself. Now, information communication technologies, that's what C-learning, D-learning, now E-learning, then back to D-learning is all about. At the wonderful SMAC conference, which uh, Joe featured at, and, and all those um, wonderfully uh, well-dressed, thin, English-speaking men. I thought everybody that was uh, to do with um, E-learning come from Manchester, and they spoke particularly well, but, but Joe, of course, didn't have an English accent. What they did is, is that they took everything that was on the internet and they put it on stage and they presented it beautifully. It was a great presentation. It was a fun conference, it was snappy. They had a lot of uh, multimedia. It was very exciting. And they brought that what we can get and what we can see up on the, uh, out in the, in the, in the web uh, onto the stage. And I think it did a lot for getting people to look at it. But we've got an awful long way to go. Because despite the fact that there are 121 blogs uh, worldwide, there's not that many more people in the general workforce who are regularly using this resource. And that's the frustrating part. In terms of defining it, if you look at the science of e-learning, there's not a lot of science of e-learning because most of it is actually written by people that sell e-learning or they produce e-learning or they're instructional designers. There's a 54-page re Sussex review which distills down to, to this uh, summary. It's all about the style of e-learning, the use of a computer, I added a device, and a set of skills, which is the same as everything. <coughs> It started off in terms of the history, we basically, we have all these wonderful things, and then what we did is, we took Judith's now gone, Tint's and Alley, and ran it into a computer. Which is fine, I think Joe's right, you probably have to read a textbook, but I slept through my textbook, so I was, there must be an element of osmosis, because I couldn't get past the first paragraph. Hands up if you can get past the first paragraph. Because I, I just sleep, I can't do it, it's hard. But, you know, you can take drugs and do that sort of stuff. Young people have all that, those things there. Then we moved from just putting a textbook in there to having interaction, and interaction was terribly painful. I know in uh, New South Wales and everywhere, when you ever uh, do your mandatory training, you have mandatory training in the US where you have to do it on an on a e-learning thing, and you learn where to put body parts or contaminated things. Like, what do you put a body part in? What colour bin? Is it red, yellow, or purple? Andrew? No idea. Don't you mean Very effective. <laughs> I rest my case. We all have to do it every year. In fact, what we do in our emergency department is we get one guy to do it for everybody. <laughs> I mean, it's much better. When he's getting paid 50, 60,000 a year. He does it for everybody. He sits there in his rooms constantly doing it. There's 120 nurses and we've got 30 doctors. He's sitting there. At least I'm out there, I can see patients all producing one of the talks for Cuba. <coughs> so it's a lot easier. But the early bad e-learning experiences destroy people. Try and get those doctors who have done these mandatory training things and they're jumping in and jumping back, and they just hate it. They take a long time to go back. If you read a crap textbook, you'll pick up the next crap textbook and the next one until you get a good one. But if you get bad England, then you are put off. So you've got to be careful of that. What we want is this. 
and we're getting a lot closer to it now. A lot of these wonderful short presentations that are snappy and pithy, you push it, I know it, fantastic. And it's great. But you've got to be aware of the baubles that Joe was mentioning that can be dangerous. Now, if, as far as short talks go, it, it's interesting how talking and presenting and everything evolved. We, we started off with an hour unit of time. Where did that come from? I mean, after five minutes, you're gone. I can see where you guys are. Uh, you're just sitting there. Five minutes completely gone. Up to 10 minutes, you start to nod off a wee bit, especially after a wonderful lunch. 15 minutes, you're starting to think of a white bleed. Get to 45 minutes, you're really hoping that I have a stroke. <laughs> when I get to an hour, you just want to come up and kill me. So it changes as you go, the progression of time. So what they did is, is that they started, it was the IT guys that really started this in the late 90s, in the conferences, they started having lightning talks. So they started off a little bit before the lightning talks, it was about 2000, 1997 design, and from lightning talks, they used to have speed geeking. Fantastic. It's sort of like, you know, when you do five minute talk, it's sort of like a speed date, you've got to present quickly, you've got to get all the information out there. Speed geeking is where you would basically have, well they're not even geeks anymore, geeks are cool people, isn't it? It's like Blake's the new whatever, brown, red. Actually, I was in the other, it's another story. So, you sit around there uh, at your table, you've got your lot of knowledge and you've got little clusters of geeks wandering around and they're getting the information and it's about five minutes at a time, bang, 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 really quickly. And we're all sitting here, we're doing it the old way, I'm sitting here for 30 minutes, it's boring, you're going to start wanting to kill me very shortly, so I'll rush on. Picha Kutcher, which started in uh, 2003 and again was presented at the, um, at the SMAC conference from a, from a medical point of view. 20 slides, 20 minutes, 6 minutes, 40. Fantastic. I distilled one of my talks down to 6 minutes, 40. It's actually quite hard to do. You really have to cut and you really have to think, what is it that people want to know? Because most of the stuff that's in a talk is crap. I don't know, I've produced 80 hours of e-learning. Most of it's rubbish. And it's, our college uses it for, I look back in the stuff, it's a wee bit like the Sydney Harbour Bridge, we'll talk about things. When you've got a bridge that's really big, you paint it, and as you get to the end, the first part started rusting already. And so if you're producing these big synchronised courses, like um, in our college uh, diploma, the first part of it I'm terribly embarrassed about, the sound's rubbish, it drones on, it's terrible. So you've got to keep on uh, repainting it, making it beautiful. But brief and short is definitely the way to do it. So how do we do it? We're connecting across the line. You can do it any particular way. It's one-to-one, one-to-many. can be webinars, can be emails, um, can be social media, which I'll get to briefly. I'm rushing through this because I actually want to, despite the fact that um, there's all this talk about stroke and thrombolysis, and some of us get on a soapbox and we, ra soapbox we ramble on, I'm actually going to show you a video at the end if I've got time that will convert you all to thrombolizing every patient that comes into the department. Just like any form of education, you've got to have the right audience, the right time, the right content, the right medium, all that sort of stuff. You've still got to have, you've still got to have something right that you want to present. It has to be worthwhile, but it has to be short and brief. I've got no idea what that slide is, I can't remember. I'll just carry on. But it's a nice, very nice image. This was the slide that was actually goes with the other bit that I said. I work on a random thought generator, I just can't remember what I'm going to say, so I'll just carry on. We'll get to that wonderful movie shortly. Now this is academic stuff on e-learning. I could read it out to you, but I'll just select that words, transformative interaction, instructional strategies, distribution, foundational knowledge, blah, blah, blah. I have no formal training in this stuff. I can't understand any of that. I don't think it has any relevance. But it was interesting that, uh, now I know what pedagogy was, I thought it was things that blood did in the parks with big suits and lollies in their pockets trying to make children. But in actual fact, it does have some sort of, fits into the whole process of learning. The, this was the summary of what that other stuff was, but I don't think it has any real relevance to what we're in now, is, is that we've just got to lasso this asynchronous explosion that's going on and somehow control it and use it. Now in terms of the evidence, there's not a lot of evidence. I think that this was one of the quotes that I read from the uh, e-learning guild. It's, it's difficult to talk simply of e-learning and then to measure how effective it's been, as e-learning is uh, dynamic as the subject is both complex and changing. It's constantly changing with each week. So if you produce something, it's rubbish the week after. So you've got to be very careful that you produce something that's re-editable, changeable, and uh, relevant, at least for the moment. Now, social media is fantastic. The first time I talked about social media was at a conference where I thought nobody else knew about it. And I was 99% right. I had to ask the person to leave. It was terrible. 
I'd only learned about it on the drive up. I know a little bit about, more about it now. Social media, we've all heard of the, of the Arab Spring. It's very, very powerful. Well, there's another, we just don't know how powerful this is. For example, there aren't any plump 12-year-old girls in the room, but a lot of you have got daughters. You would have heard about One Direction. There's four guys with hair like this. They do this all the time. There's four of them, and they sing, and they dance. One Direction. Doesn't mean anything to you, does it? But if I hashtagged One Direction, everybody jump now, boom, the whole planet would twist on its axis. Because 20 billion 12-year-old girls would go, ooh. It's very effective. So Twitter, we can change governments, and we can also tilt the earth on its axis. The interesting thing is, I tried to get our registrars, I said to them, I want you all to sign up to tweet, this is way back in January, sign up to Twitter, <coughs> send out an email, this is how you do it, a little bit of a PDF, you can do it like this. It took me six months to get 75% of them signed up, because for a start, they're all probably looking at one direction, they don't want me to bugger up their, their Twitter account with lots of uh, little uh, you know, bit leads on how to you know, put the airways, chest tubes in and do airways. But it takes a long time to get even relatively young people, in fact even sometimes harder with young people, because we're intruding into that space. Because it is called social media. It's not called work media, it's called social media. So despite the fact we have all this wonderful stuff, it's very, very hard to get them using it. On Facebook, with the Mona Lisa next to Bill's bum crack, we tried to get a journal club going. Very, very difficult. It, we're dragging them, and basically I just go back to the tried and true methods of using threatening sort of overtones. Do you want to work here next year? <laughs> this stuff, Joe made a very, very good point, and as I said, I should have just said what he said. It's all about getting good teachers and keeping it nice and short and nice and compressed. So when we teach, with our, you know, we have every Wednesday, we have a whole day of teaching, the junior doctors in the, in the morning, the registrars in the afternoon, everybody comes in and does all this teaching. It's just for our doctors. It seems a terrible waste of time. We should be getting all of the consultants doing each do a picture kitchen, six minutes 40, and it should be beaming out. Um, I've attempted a couple of times to use webinars and different things, and we're still working at it, beam it out to the other hospitals as well, because there aren't that many good teachers around. So if you've got a good teacher, or you've got a set of good teachers, beam it around, share it around. Then next Wednesday, you can take the time off, plonk everybody in front of the telly. That's what I've been doing to home to teach my kids. So basically, it all comes back to, again, what Joe said, bedside teaching. We, can't, we can learn everything we want to do, asynchronous or synchronised, but we've got to go back to teaching at the bedside. Now, in summary, I've already given it to you, so it doesn't really matter. It's got to be brief, it's got to be short, it's got to be small. Uh, there's no art, there's no science. And, and you ED guys have got to get over this. There's no evidence for thrombolysis and stroke. It's terrible. It's like a broken record. Hopefully this video will play, and this is the one that they must be playing at the neurology conferences. It's very static. Oh, no. There you go. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. We've got a problem. We've been reading some of the journal articles, and that's and that thing on the stroke from the lysis is very dodgy. Now, that's a bit naughty, kids. I told you not to read those journal articles. But look, it's just that they're very complicated and they're difficult to understand. But I've got a story that can explain everything to you. Now, come and sit down. And it's a story called Stroke in Fairyland. Do you want me to read that? Yay! Okay, let's go. Stroke in Fairyland. Once upon a time, in a far off land, everybody was happy and nobody got sick at all. And all the highly trained knights had things pretty easy. Generally, they sat around reading journal articles, fishing, and collecting insects. But most of all, they loved to play research footy. It was a marvellous pastime in Fairyland. Then along came the evil Stroke Witch and she cast a spell. And strange things started happening to the people of Fairyland. They were dropping like flies, and it seemed there was nothing the smart knights could do but just watch and care for the stroke patients. And no matter how much they read or went to conferences, there seemed to be nothing that anybody could do, and everybody was getting 
very, very sad. They used the strongest magic in the land. And they even used the ancient and tried and true methods for feeling better about things, such as the MRI and the CT scan magic. But the answers were always the same. Something bad had happened in the brain, and how well you felt wasn't always related to the magic of the MRI and the CT scan and what they could show. So the marvellous knights kept reading journals furiously. And they did a bit of fishing as well, because it's no good getting too upset about things. But they could find nothing that might work. They did find, though, that if they looked after patients really well in specialised units, that there were more improvements than if the patients were sent back to the village straight away. And this was at least promising, and made some of them happy. Things kept getting worse and worse in Fairyland. And despite some people getting better after being struck by this evil stroke witch, a number stayed in hospital for a long time. And then, a strange thing started affecting the hospitals in Fairyland. The beds started to disappear. And nobody, nobody could stop it happening. What could they do? The king demanded that something had to be done. He decreed that the neurologist must, must search far and wide and come up with an answer. Look at the cardiologists, he said, and the wonderful work they were doing with infarcts. The shining neurology knights thinking together and started to realise how different can the brain be from the heart. But Dad, the brain dies in minutes and the heart dies in hours. Well, come on. They sent messengers throughout the land to try and find out why the cardiologist had the king's favour. And in a far off land, they found the maker of Excalibur's. It was beautiful and powerful, and surely it could break the evil spell of the stroke witch. Would Excalibur's have the power to overcome the evil of the witch? They started fighting the evil witch's spell. Pretty soon, lots of knights were getting in on the act. It was fun. Yay! And it really felt good. It did mean having to go to the ED more, which is a bit yucky, but they got to strike a blow for good and tell the patients how grateful they should be. Hey, Dad, but all the try say there's no difference. Do you want to hear this story or not? <laughs> but surely no difference means no difference. Let's get back to the story, thank you, children. Ungrateful wretches. From time to time, there were some side effects. But let's not dwell on that too much, kids, and ruin a good story. But that doesn't make sense. Now, don't you start? But if we're not sure, why don't we do more trials? And then, the clouds of the randomised control trials and evidence started to hover over Fairyland. But fortunately, the beautiful bright rays of observational studies washed away all the doom of evidence. And everybody lived happily ever after. Well, some were happy. Well, actually, slightly less people lived than before. But there was no real difference. Well, except for some of the trials that showed harm. But we don't talk about those. But why is it at all? Look, shut up, kids, and let me finish the story. <laughs> and the knights were a lot happier. They got to spend time in the emergency department, although it's a bit yucky. They got to watch patients get better instead of just seeing them the next day. And they took some credit which doesn't hurt, and the king got off their backs. The end. Thanks, Dad. That's been very helpful. Okay, kids. Well, I've got to get back to work now, so you go and play in your rooms. Okay. <coughs> I'm trying to watch Daniel of the Don't tell Dad! I mean, don't tell Dad! Stroke and Thank you. Any questions for John? Is that on YouTube? Yeah, never mind. <laughs> oh, come on, please. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 If you know, we will. Yeah. 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 Just let me get a few things in order at home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there is that sign. We'll tell them you're from Australia. They won't do that. They'll never find you. Yeah. You can always count on John for a bit of levity. So. Thanks, you. Thanks, you. Any questions? Any questions? About Fairyland or anything What's else? the medium you use to create that? Uh, uh, most of them. Yeah, a mixture of PowerPoint, Camtasia, and movie, uh, movie editing. Most of them. Oh. It's good stuff. Yeah. Thanks, thanks again to John.
I mean, next up is um, Lisa Charles. We're, we're, we're going a bit out of uh, out of sync. Uh, initially, this was this was going to be a, a presentation on uh, emerging technologies. But unfortunately, uh, the the chap that was going to be presenting that couldn't couldn't come. Lisa is is what's going to be presented on the Global Health Day, but um, she's has to leave to go back to work. So uh, she's going to be presenting today instead. So this is emergency medicine in St. Lucia, Dr. Lisa Chong. <laughs> 